Okay, everybody, so I am beyond excited to bring to you a mentor of mine, a legend in alpine ski racing, John Leffler. John has put numerous athletes on the US ski team, numerous athletes on national and development teams around the world. This video and this series of videos that I am putting together here of some conditioning exercises that John works his athletes through, this video is high-end, dense content for the expert skier, for the expert coach. It's not for mogul skiers. It's not for the beginner or intermediate skier. However, please join along if you like to. It's a video that you're going to want to watch numerous times of this series uh, because it's not necessarily easy to grasp right off the bat listen to John's words. I also have his email in there and his technical manual. Uh, for all of you ski geeks out there, I highly recommend it. The cool thing about YouTube is that the world has access to information for free. The world has access to the best in the world. That is John Luffler. I hope you guys like it. Finally, what do you think of my hat? Ski Strong hat. You can support the channel. I appreciate it. You can also give the video a super thanks. Enjoy this video. Okay, one of the reasons we like to do this iron chair with this supported, with their, with their arms and shoulders is because you really can see a super powerful, what most people call core. I would call transfer chain, which is all the overlapping muscles from your hip that go over through your abdomen and literally go all the way up to your shoulders. Remember some of the muscles on the back of your body in the shoulder blade actually stabilize the hip as well. So if it's stable, like Amy is everything super stable and really locked in, I mean, it's just like if she was doing a clean or a deadlift, she could support massive amount of weight in that position. Okay, neutral, neutral is a phase. She's gliding, equal weight on both skis, going straight ahead, toes up, and then she's gonna establish a side. So now she's got edge contact here for the left side turn. So in order to make sure that this is dominant, she pulls this foot behind her hip. And this is called stance and gait, it's natural. If the foot's behind the hip, it automatically will wanna carry the load. So you don't have to move side to side. You can move simply forward. It's just, it's the walking motion. If I come up here, as this foot packs behind my hip, the, the, the large stance muscles automatically turn on. So you were changing dominant side, not in a lateral motion, but in a linear sagittal plane forward action. And even when we're creating our edge angle, when she does the inside flexion and, and, and drive, the inside flexion basically takes our system and tips it over on edge. But we're still perpendicular to the top sheets. To her world, she's not leaning. Her world, she's standing on the, on the floor. Not only to the coaches, does it look like they're leaning in. Deb's turn. The hard part is, is, is to do it one, two, three, three four. All right. Okay, so. Number one. It's all. So that right, because it's, yeah, so those, that's called internal and external rotation. Yep. That's, that's, that's right. Yeah. And there's certain sets of muscles that do the action. That's so right. If she moves herself into flexion, those same, no, yep. don't, the knees would be on a, there we go. The will be on a straight line. They're not changing. They're just, and you don't have to go quite so deep. Okay. Um, just from there. And then these are, the, the femurs are not changing position. You're not twisting. Right. They stay, all you're doing is simply internal and external rotating at the femur, which is going to change the edge. Okay. And that's and the, and that's the, the most important, that's the thing in there. Okay, now I'm going to tip, but now increase edge angle. Yeah, but, but you just turned your hip. I did. Keep yeah, those hips straight at the camera. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm going to give you a little Okay, we're going to pull the foot back. So now you're in the stance position. Okay. And these large muscles will fire. Okay. Okay. And then if you want to create more edge angle, then you have to you flex this, which is basically tips the system over. Right? But that inside knee can still drive forward, can't it? Yep. So it's got a, something to stand on. Okay? Yeah. All right. And then you're going to pull your at the end. Use all this adduction and you pull your hip toward the outside of the corner. Just outline yourself to fall the inside of the corner. Whoa! Got it. You fall yourself to the inside of the corner. Yeah, it's like it's like running. Okay, so wife phase, and then she's gonna establish that she's gonna pull the foot back, so now she's got the right side dominant. In order to create more edge angle, she's gonna flex this, which basically tips the system on edge, and then she's gonna pull her hips to the outside of the corner. So she makes sure that she doesn't move to the inside. So those are the phases of the upper body. Again, power position, right? And if there, exactly, if there's gonna be any side bending at all, any kind of leveling of the shoulders, it'd be from way up here. So when, they you, when they tell you to level your shoulders, you should just say, yeah, okay. Fine. Upper torso Cause activity. Yeah, because here's yep. what happens is you get all this. You get oh. side bending. Okay, that's we don't want that. Look how strong that is. <laughs> that's right. That's right. If you side bend, especially at the hip, and then you break that integrity down in the body and it cannot support the forces that you have when you're skiing. That should be good. Yeah, okay. It's really important that you, when you, you do these, that you always try and stretch the band. And what you're trying to do is sense the, the position, but also the musculature that's re, what's required. Yeah. Basically, we try and start out and we try and do, uh, you know, 10 aside. We try and keep moving out to 20 aside, and we try and add add bands to it. This is the heavy band. Um, so. You can do much more effective, especially if you pull it back the yeah. first time you pull that after having not done it with the band. Right. Immediately you pick up that sensation. Yeah. It's just like on snow, you know. That's why we use it on the snow so much. Again, every feet are parallel. It's really important that she's got the toes up, which she does. It's called dorsiflexion. It's basically a good power position. And you can just see the, the powerful alignment through her body <clears throat> on both sides. You can see it on both. You can see it on both the inside and the outside. These angles, these are straight lines. That's what you need to support. Can't happen if you're if you're edging laterally with the hip in and the foot, foot or feet out. There's no way in the world you don't have to side bend, otherwise you fall down. And so for this position, you've broken down the most the critical piece of the kinetic chain, which is here to here. Pretty hard with the leg stuff too. Yeah, it's already cut tight. <laughs> yeah, just see what you can get out of it. Okay. That's where you really get it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's moving. Yeah, that's good though. The band. Yeah, it's all right. You're you're good. The thing that this uh, is so spectacular is this isn't kind of like skiing. It is exactly skiing. You're using exactly the same muscles in the same sequence in the same order. The only thing we're not able to do is create, um, it, until we put the band on, increased force because as she got more developed, like let's say uh, a turn at higher speed, then she would pick up more force through the band. Quantum Ski Mechanics, or QSM, is John Leffler's comprehensive guide to competitive skiing. And you can purchase this for $35 at the email below, quantumsports at comcast.net.